Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Oklahoma wheat producers have quite a bit of grain in storage. They've been holding out for higher prices, but now some of them are adapting their strategy. Joining us now is Dave Lawman, our Extension Beef Cattle Specialist. Dave, we've talked a lot about wheat pasture, but today we want to talk about wheat grain. What's the scenario? So wheat is inexpensive in relation to other feed grains that beef cattle producers commonly use. And so anytime that scenario develops, it's probably worth, worth our while to consider where we might be able to incorporate wheat into a beef cattle ration and you know how much to feed and those kind of things. So some folks are doing that and you and your colleagues have, have run the numbers. Give us some analysis and what you have looked at. Yeah, so uh, Greg Heifel and I several years ago developed a little, a little calculator tool, just an Excel spreadsheet tool that helps you identify kind of the break even point at which wheat might become cost effective to incorporate in beef cattle rations. Uh, what that tool shows is that, let's say you have a scenario where corn is around $4 a bushel and soybean meal, a protein source, is worth about $350 a bushel. Okay, so with, with those two ingredients, you can combine about 92% corn, 8% soybean meal, and what you wind up with is basically uh, reconstructed wheat. Okay, so from a TDN or energy and protein standpoint. Well, today at $4.350 for the corn and soybean meal, that makes wheat worth about $4.78 a bushel as a feed grain. Well, the price of wheat is not that high. So that tells you that it should be a good feed bargain. So say someone has run the numbers and they say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Uh, what are the things they need to consider? What's it gonna to take to put it into practice? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of important considerations. Number one is it should be, the grain should be processed. Okay, so if it's not processed, digestibility of the energy basically is, is reduced by, oh, the research shows anywhere from 15 to 25%. So it does need to be processed. Uh, good, good way to do that would be to dry roll it. Some folks would have the capability uh, perhaps to steam roll it, which would even be better. If you have to grind it, you just want to grind it coarsely. You want to avoid trying to make a lot of small uh, fine particles or flour, if you will, because wheat is rapidly fermented in the room and, and so if you're not careful, you can create a situation where you might have acidosis bloat and founder with too fine of particles and feeding too much all at once. The second thing that folks ought to consider is the amount. Uh, a simple rule of thumb is that if you're feeding, so let's say growing cattle, um, a diet that's got some concentrate in it, some other source of feed grain, uh, about half of the concentrate portion as wheat is a relatively safe um, way to go. So um, needs to be processed and no more than about half of the concentrate portion. With those two rules of thumb, uh, producers should be, uh, it should be a fairly safe practice for to, you know, to put some weight on whether it be lactating cows or growing calves. Any concerns for calving season or as we, as we head into fall? Not really. I mean, one advantage I don't think I mentioned is that wheat is a little bit higher in protein than corn. It'll be anywhere from two to maybe up to four percentage units higher in protein. Of course, that's good for a cow that's grazing uh, lower quality forage this time of year. Uh, but she's going to need additional protein sources to go with that. You know, uh, 12 to 13 percent protein wheat's not going to be enough protein. So she'll still have to have supplemental uh, protein. Um, but that is an advantage to feeding wheat. In fact, we say that wheat has about 102 to maybe 104% of the feeding value of corn. And the reason it's a little bit higher is because of the extra protein. Well, and as we've heard from Kim Anderson these last few weeks, there's, there's quite a bit of it around, so. There is. The feed yards have actually been feeding wheat all summer. And so anytime they start to do that, it tells us we ought to be, we ought to be doing the, you know, the, the math. Okay, Dave Wallman, thanks a lot. Thank you.